New video shows one of the world. Okay, so this is the Chinese uh, airliner that took a f insane nosedive. For the record, I have not talked to Marat yet. I really wanted to before covering this story and getting his take on it. Um, but unfortunately, I was not able to. But this is a, uh, a Boeing, Chinese Boeing airplane that literally just out of nowhere took a fucking nosedive. It's different than the Max, first of all. Uh, and and it's not about like uh, pilots trying to uh, take control over the landing, uh, uh, automated like landing software or anything like that. This is a 737-800 and it literally just fucking yeah, was boom, crazy. like I directly was fucking dipped in, which is, is weird. And I guess on, like, like that's not how planes fucking dive, okay? World's most popular jetliners dropping from the sky. Security images obtained by state-owned television show China... Yeah, look. Do you see that? I mean, that's crazy, but... Eastern Airlines flight 5735 plunging straight down into the mountains of southern China. Data from Flight Radar 24 shows minutes after leveling off at a cruising altitude of 29,000 feet, the Boeing 737 began a rapid dive, losing more than 25,000 feet in less than two minutes. China state media says all 132 people on board were killed. This is what they would have heard in the cockpit. As they Retired airline pilot Mark Weiss teaches in this Boeing 737. Like, I'm not going to say that it was an intentional dive, right, or that it was deliberate. All I'm simply stating, and what media will say here, is that planes don't do that. Or not that it's planes don't do that. You can't as do comrade, that. Like, it's comrade, not. That has to be intentional. Given how flight works, you don't just go from, like, flying like this to, like, all of a sudden taking a fucking nosedive out of nowhere and just uh, directly diving into the ground. Austin. Oh, Austin's here. All right, Austin, get in, get in the Discord right now. Hop in the Discord, motherfucker. This is, talk to me. I think this might be the one time, the one yeah. time that we have like a professional, an expert offer. Chief, expert Court, Austin show. The moment I heard you talking about planes, there was, I don't know, I felt it tingling and I joined Hospital. Someone added you in Discord. Someone definitely told you in Discord, didn't they? I have my notifications turned off in Discord, but I did get added a couple times. I did, admittedly. Uh, and I immediately ran for the computer because I had to make a comment on this situation. All right, let's hear it. What do you think? What do you think is going on, Austin Show? Mr. Show is joining us, an expert in aviation. That's right. Uh, look, first of all, it's too early to speculate, but we're going to do it anyway. There's no yes. way we will know exactly. We need to find the black box first, but unfortunately, yes. given the nature of the crash, uh, like a missile strike and the ongoing fires, Multiple components off the plane uh, ripping apart. They are having a hard time securing the black box at the moment. That's right. My first take is, well, first of all, I want to clear up a very uh, a misconception here. And that is, this is not the 737 MAX. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Max. You're too late on that. Oh, but 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 I'm gonna but I'm gonna make I'm gonna say it again. It doesn't even have the same software that that was no, malfunctioning. This is the 737 NG. It's the new, it's the new generation. Um, what's what's most disturbing about this crash to me is the 737 NGs have been very very reliable aircraft, and and to to this point haven't really. I mean, they've had uh, fatal accidents, but you know. Not something I've never seen something like this with 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 the seven thirty seven eight hundred. From what I understand, the the plane went from an altitude of flight level two nine zero or two nine one roughly, and went into a nose dive, and then it recovered very briefly, according to flight radar, very briefly, and then nose dived again. My first instinct to me as a chief aviation correspondent is. The, the failure that would have to occur for that to happen would have to be absolutely catastrophic um, for something to uh, happen where the where the where the elevator was jammed so aggressively. The elevator is the thing that 
or, or something was jammed so aggressively in which it would cause the plane to dive in uh, at that rate. Has this been added to um, Battlefield 2042? There's nothing on these not, planes in the, in the 737NG, per se. Passed. The reason why, the, let me take you back to the MAX for a second. For those of you that are talking about the 737 MAX disaster. Well, the, the MAX had this piece of software called MCAS, and MCAS was designed... Um, because the, the weight of the plane was distributed in such a way it made it more vulnerable to a stall. And so MCAS was put in so that if these planes were going to stall, it would push the nose down. But it misfired and unfortunately drove the nose down when the planes weren't in danger of a stall, and that's why you had those disasters. The 737NG is not equipped with that system. It, ha it does not have that system aboard the aircraft. And to my knowledge, there's no system that would be in the aircraft uh, that that would that would that would force the nose down uh, on on its own. There's no s preventative system or anything like that, to my knowledge, in in, in the 737 NG. So what my mind goes to is either catastrophic failure of like hydraulics or some sort of like elevator. Like th there was there was a there was a disaster way back when that that the elevator or something got lodged. I think it was like on a DC 10, DC nine or something or an MD eighty, and it got lodged and drove the plane into the ground. Um, I just don't. It's either that or, dare I say, I don't want to speculate because it's way too early, but I'm going to anyway, or some sort of, like, self in, like, the, yeah, the pilot. like a deliberate attempt a deliberate. to... That was my first What would thought. be, I, what, what, what would, so you're saying there are things outside of, like, uh, intentionally cranking the fucking sticks yeah. and, and just doing a full-blown nosedive. Uh, you're saying that there is a well, likelihood that something else, like, it is... Now. Now, at least possible it, it's in the realm of possibility that uh, and again to, but but there's not in the realm of what's occurred in the past like like i said the 737 ng has been a workhorse and have been a very reliably oh, safe and go aircraft not the max the ng and the max is for the record is very safe now after everything that went through but the ng has been never had any uh, they've had fatal accidents, but never s anything like this. So this would be an unprecedented situation in which Long time I don't know what would have failed, but um, to go nosedive that quickly, bro, it, just, it went. It, it literally cut out. It, it like after. I mean, it, it just it looks like a straight nosedive. Any yeah. kind of like engine failure wouldn't cause it to do a straight nosedive. No. No. It, it, there's way heavier parts of the fucking plane. That's not how it. That's not how it works. You know, like well, it, it, engine. And first of all, an engine failure. When you, when your engine fails, you don't go into a nosedive. I mean, the, these planes are essentially big gliders, right? That's what. Yeah. In, in fact, they're designed in such a way that even if you do have catastrophic dual engine failure, you should be able to glide to a safe destination. Yeah. Um, and and plenty so like, of planes have done that in the past as well during engine yes. failure. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the Hudson one, right? The Hudson guy. Yeah. That that was a dual that was a dual engine failure at a very low altitude, um, caused by bird strike, and that landed safely the other the other time there's been other ones that have n landed safely there was a 747 that 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 in, like had quad quadruple engine failure and they glided safely to their destination because if you if you make the calculation and just using the laws of physics you can get down safely within a certain amount of uh uh you know within a certain amount of time even when you're flying over the north atlantic there's always like you're within a certain distance of an airport to safely land usually um but this, to me, like my first, in, like my first instinct would when I saw it was like, oh, that has to be deliberate. But then again, you can't rule out all the other stuff, right? Like there could be, uh, you know, it wouldn't it, you know, it wouldn't have been an engine failure. You you wouldn't think uh, it, it could have been, I guess, but it doesn't cause the nose to dive like that. Exactly. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of, like I said, would be like. Um, something to do with the rudder or the elevator and it's, you, you pull up the you know what a rudder in an elevator is no so the rudders that th you know when you look at the back of a, a, a of a of a plane the tail the tail i section, know what a rudder is i don't know what the elevator is the elevator is the other the the flat one the 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 the, the, the rudder is the one sitting vertically the um the the elevator is the one that's sitting horizontally and that's the that's the one that uh here let me show you folks you heard it here first our our aviation expert correspondent is bringing in additional details yeah, giving us an inside look 
Yeah. So the see like so if you if you push the nose down, right? Those elevators are going to be shown in that you know, they're going to they're going to be up, right? They're going to be up if you push the nose down. So there is a potential has that something caused that elevator to jam. So if a plane and, were to lose But see, the, the weird part to me that gives like that. me some pause is the fact that the plane, the control surfaces, um, has no according to flight radar, recovered or tried to recover or climb a little bit. Yeah, in and the end. To nosedive again. Yeah. But to me, Hi, from Brazil, that sad. could just insinuate a struggle in the cockpit of some sort. You know, like that's maybe, what I that exactly 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 that's or, I mean again we should not be speculating but I mean this is all speculation this is all just, speculation we don't know we, we can't deliberately we can't say in, uh, or not now the other thing is I thought for a second perhaps flightradar.com isn't accurate because to me if your nose dive no there's a, a video that well no 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 I know the plane was in a nose dive but I'm talking about the recovery part oh. like is the video the the recovery part I I don't to me if you're nose diving at that at that pitch if you were to pull back on the stick the plane's just gonna break apart like it probably already was breaking apart as it was diving down I just feel like it would be almost impossible for it to even recover wouldn't an elevator malfunction like why wouldn't the elevator malfunction cause it to to stop dead in its tracks and then go directly for a nose dive Instead of trying, like, wouldn't there's no way it would flip, right? What do you mean flip? Like, like the plane keep continuing its... uh, through with the momentum, continuing to like loop. Oh, oh, that's a good. I mean, I mean, I guess no, there's not enough. No. There's not enough space. No, like, there's not enough so. uh, no, altitude no, no, no. for it to loop, right? No. That's not like a. I see what you, I see. What you're saying like you just push the push the the stick forward, and then it just like starts to loop a little bit. No, I'm not uh, saying that. No. I'm saying like, well, and that was like a direct nose that it took like two and a half minutes, right? And, and the other thing is, like, you would think if you're the captain or you're 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 in this plane and it's some sort of failure, at that moment you would pull the stick, like you would pull the throttle back. I don't know how long it would take to go to the ground from that altitude but i wonder if it would, the time at which they reached it does that it indicates to me maybe perhaps the throttle was uh forward quite a bit crazy yeah there's a brief moment of recovery towards the end there and then it continues on the same exact um same exact to dive me, pattern to me that my question is like why is that recovery that that's what gives me pause is like why if it was like a mission as if we were like if we're we're potentially speculating on why was there that brief recovery yeah and that's what I, that's what i can't figure out and that's why we can't say for sure what happened until the the investigation investigation concludes that being said i i don't know i cannot say but I will say the 737NG is a very, very reliable aircraft. It's very yeah. reliable. And, and by the way, this has not happened in China in, in many, many years, I think, right? This is like very not a, uh, a common occurrence in China from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. It, it's, too, it, it's, too, it's, too, it's too challenging to tell. And, and it, you know, perhaps... Uh, and also the other disturbing thing is there is no distress call or anything like that made. Um, you know, not, not, I mean, they went down so quickly. I mean, there's not much time so to, Jack uh, make a distress call. So the, the three, what are the, the three rules, right? So there's, uh, the first one is aviate. What was it? Is it, there's three things, right? Aviators in the chat, aviate, communicate, or aviate, navigate, communicate. Isn't that how it goes? You have to you, you the rules when there's a when there's something dangerous. It's aviate first, then navigate, and then communicate. So, wait, they're they, saying this is almost identical to the Alaska Airlines uh, flight. That, yeah, so that's the one I was talking about. The 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 the, the jammed uh, elevator or something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, that's but that's a completely different plane. The probable the cause NBA was stated NBA. to be a loss of airplane pitch control resulting from the in-flight failure of the horizontal stabilizer trim system, jack screw assemblies, trap, trapezoidal nut threads. 
The threat failure mm-hmm. was caused by excessive wear resulting from Alaska Airlines' insufficient lubrication of the jack screw assembly. For the heroic efforts to save the plane, the pilots were posthumously awarded and commemorated. The accident served as an inspiration for the fictionalized crash landing depicted in the 2012 movie Flight, starring Denzel Washington. Um, I guess like yeah, this, there was a the there was a brief the there was a brief recovery. The flight crew successfully used the primary trim system to unjam the stuck horizontal stabilizer. Upon being freed, however, it quickly moved to an extreme nose down position, forcing the aircraft to an almost vertical nose dive. The plane dropped from uh, 31,000 feet to 23 and 24,000 in around 80 seconds. Both pilots struggled together to regain control of the aircraft and only pulling with 130 to 140 pound on the controls. Did the flight crew stop the 6,000 feet a minute descent of the aircraft and stabilize it? But this, I believe this situation Holy occurred, shit, didn't, the didn't maybe. the, uh, and, and, and the other thing is, by the way, the other thing to consider uh, that it could maybe not be deliberate and has to do something with the vertical stabilizer is the fact that, from my understanding, this they went nose down pitch at like top of descent, right? So this was the right where they descended, like the the day previously on that route, is when the nose dive occurred, roughly right around top of descent. I mean, it's a different when flight, I feel the but rot on it's a different, does it have a, a similar horizontal stabilizer? And he still we don't no, know. The horizontal, the horizontal stabilizer is lower. It's in a different position. But, I mean, it's the same idea. I mean, yeah. I'm saying that, like, could it, could it be a, a similar a malfunction? It's a different plane. It's a different design. There's, it, they're all similar. It's the same idea, but it's a different. It's not. This is a completely different plane. Yeah. Yeah. So the the disturbing thing is that it could be the vertical stabilizer. That's scary. That's really scary because there's a lot of 737s out there that um you know. Yeah, are but in that'd service. be fucking insane that like out of nowhere it happens. Like what? Well, the the other thing is is like and and the key to that that investigation, by the way, chat, the key to that Alaska Airlines investigation is uh Alaska Airlines themselves were found to be negligent in the process. It wasn't, it was the Alaska Airlines maintenance that was found to be negligent. It wasn't the manufacturer. In this case, McDonnell Douglas was not found to be negligent in the situation, right? So it had something to do with that, that particular accident. Alaska Airlines had to do with the Alaska Airlines maintenance, right? Not the manufacturer. So in this particular case, again, we don't know yet if it had to do with the vertical stabilizer, um, then then the manufacturer, it, it may not be a Boeing issue. It could be a China Eastern maintenance issue. And there's a million things it could be, right? You can't jump the conclusions, um, which is why I feel bad for Boeing because, God, you don't know. Like, they, they may have had nothing to do with this, you know? And then idiots on Twitter, I was mauling on Twitter. Like, I didn't want to respond to anybody. I didn't want to get into a fight on Twitter. But, like, people were fucking p- comparing this to the Max. It's like it's a completely different aircraft. You know what I mean? Like yeah, Jesus one was Christ. one was a software malfunction with pilots like trying to uh, regain control, right? Uh, yeah. W- versus it's, this well, is like entirely yes. different. Well, we don't know. I mean, we don't or, know. I, I mean, we I don't know. But like the the software. the the pattern of the flight is different too. Like those planes didn't go on a direct nose dive, did they? Uh, yes, yeah, some of them did. Yeah, they did. I thought. Well, yeah, they- yeah, it was the. The MK, well, they tried to, they, 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 they went into a nosedive and then they like were, they, people tried to recover them. Oh, I thought it was, right? I, I thought it wasn't a direct nosedive, uh, in, in a similar pattern like this. I thought it was different. Not from cruise. It was like very low altitudes. Yeah. That happened at. Very low altitudes, which is why, um, yeah, it ha- I thought it was because of the, um, like the landing, uh, autopilot. No. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the MCAS system, as I told you, uh, as I understand, the MCAS system was designed because of the w- the weight of the. I think wherever the uh, Marat can explain this better, but something to the effect of where the engine sat on the wing made the plane more likely to stall at lower altitudes, and they invented they invented this piece of software called MCAS to sort of counteract that risk. And what MCAS is designed to do when the aircraft is stalling or in a, about to reach a stall, it pushes the nose forward. 
that particular piece of software malfunctioned in the in the in the Max, which led to the 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 aircraft thinking the plane was in a stall when it really wasn't and pushing the nose into the ground. So that's 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 what MCAS was. But the NG, the 737 NG does not have MCAS equipped. It's not equipped with MCAS. It's a previous generation. And for the record, the the Max is now safe and you should feel completely safe flying on them. I'm a little bit of paranoid so I don't go on them, but you should still feel safe. Damn. Like you should still Bro, feel you safe. can't be saying that while we're having a conversation about fucking you know, crashes and you're like for the record, for those of you who are wondering, why the fuck months. does this bimbo yeah, know so much about planes? It's because of his fear and in an effort to combat <laughs> his fear because he has to fucking fly to LA all the goddamn time on other places so he and, can get, and I will say, get the most mileage two, out of his credit cards. I've got thousands of hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator, okay? That's true. And, and look, you may think that's not a lot, but hey, have you guys seen the video? of me landing a full motion simulator, okay? I did that with zero experience other than what I learned on Flight Simulator, okay? All right, I'm serious, I'm serious, hey, fine. How do you think I know this, okay? Yeah, I, I can land a full motion simulator. Yeah, I did, I did, I landed it, I landed one very easily. Uh, it was easy, it was fantastic. Um, but that's kind of the extent of what I know and what I speculate. Like I said, if I had a guess, it seems kind of deliberate. Bodies. Second to that would be something to do with the vertical stabilizer. Okay, well, we're gonna watch, now we're going to watch yeah. some fake experts at CNN, the Clinton Crime News Network, <laughs> give their take on this matter, which probably will that be wrong. Thanks. And Wait, I'm, I'm going to stay muted. I want, I want to see what and, they And, and it won't say. be correct like your analysis, of course. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay muted, okay? Okay. All right. Seven simulator. He notes the plane in question was a Boeing 737-800, which lacks the technology behind the one crashes of legal. the 737 MAX. It's probably one of the safest airplanes ever built. This was the model before the MAX, and that did not have the MCAS system in it. Even though people hear 737. Apples and oranges. Same airplane, different problem. What was supposed to be a less than two hour flight from Kunming to Guangzhou crashed in heavy forest, making access for rescuers difficult. Witnesses say they saw no smoke coming from the jetliner until it hit the ground. The 737-800 is the second most common airliner in the world. There are more than 4,500 worldwide, uh -oh. including almost 800 in the United States. China Eastern Airlines is now grounding its entire 737-800 fleet. The early evidence is very ominous. I'm afraid the early evidence on this accident, they say there's points uh, that, that you're going to do a hard look at the flight crew. Well, if the Chinese government is leading this investigation, but experts stress to us that a Boeing 737 should not fall out of the sky quite like this. Southwest Airlines and American Airlines fly hundreds of of these airplanes you've likely off. flown on one of them already. Bro, he's blinking so much it's killing me right now ready what's also interesting here is that this data shows this flight did this steep dive then climb back up just below 10,000 feet then that dive continues he's literally blinking the morse code that at the top of the hour there's a 60 second ad break i just realized and if you no longer wait what is he saying if you no longer want to see those ads all you need to do is subscribe you're lying actually no i'm not he, he did Continued. Once again, that's something that investigators will no doubt zero in on once they recover the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. Both had not been found yet. Dangerous. Is it Austin? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm listening. Yep. So a couple things. Immediately what I saw in the chat is, you know, I'm, I'm parasocial. I can't avoid chat even when I'm peeing. Is yep. people saying no remains found. That's suspicious. What do you think about that? Uh, no remains found? So far. Wait, well, why, why do they find that suspicious? They're like, ooh, what if it was like, what if there was no one? Come on, bro, it's a plane crash. This, no, this is the type of well, shit that, I mean, look, this is the type of shit that, you know, conspiracy theorists eat off of, you know what I mean? No, here's the deal. The reason why you may not find any remains is because the plane was going at such a high velocity upon impact, I imagine, unfortunately, uh, people essentially disintegrated um, or were scattered so far away and in, in, in yeah. unrecognizable pieces, unfortunately. I mean, that's one. 
Uh, and then the other yeah. question is, why can't they find the black box or could the black box have been destroyed? The answer is no. Uh, they will find the black box. It usually, from what I understand, it usually does take some time to find the black box. Uh, it's not something, that, you know, that you get to this crash site, the plane was nose down towards the ground, it had a like a horrible impact and was, you know, spread into a million different pieces. They will find the box. It just a matter of, you know, uh, matter of time. I mean, I these, these black boxes usually made of stainless steel or, or, or titanium usually made to withstand high impact velocity uh, of 3,400 G's. Uh, so, you know, it's most likely will survive. I think, I mean, the whole point of know, the black box is that they, they have to ensure its survivability. Obviously you can't predict it for every single thing, but like, right. That's the, that's why I they, said like it's most likely. Yeah, they fine. will find the black box. It's just a matter of finding it. It it it's there somewhere. It's just it, it's the the crash site is horrific. They would have found it easier if like the if the plane wouldn't have crashed like it did. Um, but but see, I'm not the only one. Uh, I mean, you heard everything that I said echoed throughout that video. One, it you know hard look at the flight crew. That's code for they maybe think it's deliberate. And then, um, you know, the 737NG has been a very reliable aircraft, historically, very reliable aircraft. Are you going to stop flying um, in 737NGs seven, uh, seven, uh, now? Will I stop? No, I think they're very safe. I, I, I don't know, though. I mean, who knows? I mean, what they'll find, right? There's a million different factors. I mean, flying is still the safest mode of... I will be taking an Airbus 320 to Los Angeles this week. Um, but uh, But, you know... It's just I, I legitimately will, and I'm not even joking. Uh, but uh, but I, I'm not gonna stop flying the the 737. Yes, planes are safer than cars. Yeah, very. You are much, much so. more likely to die in a fiery car crash on your way to the uh, to the airport, airport, or like you're more likely to die walking into the airport than actually on on. A I plane. will be like more of an anxious flyer now because of course you know this, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is healthy though. You are not the only one. I I, I know a couple of the people that have uh, you know this level of of interest in flights specifically to combat their fear of flying. Yeah, I mean, I used to want to be a pilot. That was like my reason why I knew a lot about flying. And then I do research certain things. Okay, um, have you speaking of air flight? Have you seen the Tesla going airborne? Uh, no. Oh, wait, you mean the from the TikTok, the guy that jumped the... Yeah. No. That's our next story, if you want to be yes. a part of this one as well. Wait, before we move on, can we get an explanation of what the black box is for chatters who don't know? Not me, clearly, because I know, but others who don't know. Feels dank, man. Uh-uh. The black box is... Uh, it has, like, all of the information uh, inside of a... Uh, everything that's going on in real time uh, it being logged on... I guess I don't know what the fuck it would be called. There, so there's two things, right? Is it? I think are there two things? It's just records. It has like all the data Yo. and all of the uh, all the recordings inside of the plane uh, inside of the plane to basically figure out what went wrong. So I think there's two types, right? There's the there's a flight data recorder too, and then there's like a the cockpit voice recorder. Isn't that right? I don't know. There's like a couple. There's one that has like the information that you that, that that occurred, like that it recorded, and then also second to that, like the cockpit voice recorder. An underwater locator beacon is a small cylinder on the far right. There's a flight recorder, an electronic device recorder in the aircraft for the purpose of facilitating the investigation of aviation wanted. accidents and incidents. Flight recorders are also known by the misnomer black box. They are in fact painted bright orange in color to aid the recovery after accidents. There are two types of flight recording devices. Flight data recorder, FDR, preserves the recent history of the flight throughout the recording of dozens of parameters collected several times per second. The cockpit voice recorder, CVR, preserves the recent history of the sounds in the cockpit, including the conversation of the pilots. The two devices may be combined into a single unit. Together, the FDR and CVR objectively document the aircraft's flight history, which may assist in any later investigation. That's it. Somebody also asked in the chat, why don't they make the entire plane out of the same material of the, <laughs> of the black box? And Five months of brain I imagine that has. probably has to do with the fact that the plane wouldn't be aerodynamic if it was made of the, steel. The, the amount of lift, <laughs> the amount of lift accompanied with like, the, the amount of force necessary to like make something like that. 
uh, reach flight would be pretty difficult, I assume. 